Hello and welcome to some more Star Citizen news. It is Saturday the 24th of September. We have 3.18 about to go to Eva Carty. CIG's words, not mine. CitizenCon in two weeks. A quick summary of Star Citizen Live and Inside Star Citizen, as well as a sneak peek at something that might be going into Alpha 3.18. Potentially, the Argo SRV, maybe, you can decide that for yourselves. Uh, from the Star Citizen newsletter this week, Alpha 3.18 to PTU soon for Evocati. Our upcoming patch, Alpha 3.18, will be available to test on the public test universe for our Evocati testers soon. The initial build will focus on persistent entity streaming, PEZ, and as we open up to more testers, we plan to also integrate additional content such as ship salvage, new locations, new missions, and more soon after. So sort of bear that in mind. If you do see leaks for that once that goes to the Evocati, it is going to be just focusing on persistent entity streaming um, and probably a few other little minor features at the sort of at first. I think it's going to be incredibly buggy. Obviously, persistent entity streaming is a giant core tech change um, and how the sort of servers and databases all work. So expect the lots and lots of horror stories to start with, but um, it will expand out to more and more. Clan Imperium still plan to have 3.18 live at the moment. That's targeted for the middle of November to sort of coincide or just before the Intergalactic Aerospace Expo. We'll have to wait and see exactly what happens during those PTU tests. Digital CitizenCon 2952. Don't forget to start planning for October 8th, as we have tons of exciting content and development updates to share at this year's Digital CitizenCon. So for that, we're expecting seven panels at CitizenCon that are going to be around an hour long each, with the journey to 4.0 being the theme, from new ships to pyro updates to the resource system, which will see ships sort of moving towards physical components and sort of damage control engineering gameplay. The resource system sort of takes um, sort of fuel or power and then distributes it to the appropriate areas of the ship and that can be interrupted and that might need to be repaired and that could be rerouted. There's a huge amount of stuff that that then allows for in the Star Citizen universe. I'm extremely hyped for CitizenCon and you can tell that I'm extremely hyped for that particular panel as well. So CitizenCon, it's the biggest information sharing event of the year and Star Citizen is really starting to make tangible progress and is getting a lot more playable month to month or at least quarter to quarter though there is still a long way to go don't expect much if any in the way of squadron 42 information at this year's citizen con though and um they're not planning to have that big sort of keynote and special gameplay demo that they normally have each year um this year so set expectations accordingly inside star citizen this time was occupation localization so this looked at the localization team that translates star citizen and squadron 42 into mortal world languages while also making sure that nuances, signposting, references and easter eggs aren't lost in translation. Obviously as the game is sort of expanding and gets more and more players it becomes more and more viable and important for Cloud Imperium for Star Citizen to make sure it's appropriate in um, multiple languages and obviously Squadron 42 that needs to be ready on release for um, lots of different places in the world. There was also a piece on the Siege of Orison and how it's evolved and improved and how it's allowed for things like 100 plus player servers. The Siege of Orison will continue to improve and be run from time to time in a similar style to like Xenothreat and all the other um, dynamic events that Cloud Imperium run. Obviously the focus of the Siege of Orison was sort of FPS gameplay but also co-op medical gameplay trying to heal people that went down obviously that wasn't for everyone some people have probably haven't even used the med gun uh, during the siege of Orison other than to heal themselves um, but obviously there could be a big focus on that there's a big focus on working together to do objectives um, take out bosses and loot and obviously is markedly different than all the other events that they've done so far on star citizen live this time it was a episode out of character originally this was supposed to be an ai based episode that had to be rescheduled so and we're having the ai episode later and jared interviewed damien duval lead character artist for star citizen as he works to build a new character art team with turbulent and jeremiah lee jay lee used to be the lead character artist but now he's working on squadron 42 at the moment and has a new title of character art director damien worked on dead by daylight for seven years a game that i actually still play uh, before working with cloud imperium dead by daylight was made by behavior who have previously worked with star citizen making various things like the hangar module in law playable retro arcade game hyper vanguard force which i used the theme tune for for my videos for a very long time as well as various flair for hangers jared plans to eventually have a star citizen live sort of episode for each team within 
Cloud Imperium. Sort of makes sense. Damien has carte blanche for a lot of his artwork. So is able to make big decisions with art direction and said if he ever leaves the project he would do like a big interview about it and like why he'd left so everyone would know almost like a threat but he wasn't meant like that from what i could tell it was more of a transparency thing saying look i'm not planning to leave the project anytime soon and if, sort of if i do um, people will know why uh, the team there is still growing for art and they'll be able to meet the needs of Star Citizen's development as they grow more and more. A large amount of employees have moved or are moving to the UK at the moment. Obviously, that's where they're expanding their studios mostly because um, they've got a huge studio there now. But all studios around the world have openings and are expanding as well. It looks like it is still the plan to be able to play as an alien one day in Star Citizen's future. They talked about character sizes and they said basically within... Like humans, you're only going to be able to be one size of human. You're not going to be able to have big or fat or tiny characters for humans. Assumedly, um, if um, they do add aliens in the future, then they would be different metrics. The Banu would be taller, but you wouldn't be able to have like lots of different variety in the body um, shape of the Banu. They would just be like one metric of, well, this is a Banu, bam. Um, they don't want to deviate from archetypes, especially in a game with very high fidelity they don't want to have like weird hitboxes and different hitbox sizes for different players that's just madness uh, this week's sneak peek was of a component room and section of an argo ship so this could well be the argo srv the tractor beam and tow ship some people are thinking that maybe the srv is going to be part of that 3.18 release cycle so either with 3.18 and its initial launch or 3.18.1 or something like that we know that ship scale tractor beams would be super useful for the cargo refactor and to generally evolve cargo gameplay further and i do think it's very possible that we could see this as part of 3.18 or 3.19 but i also think we could see the hull c um, in 3.18 or 3.19 as well because of the amount of work that's been done on it and it's very possible that they'll also have ship tractor beams beyond just the srv at the same time so sort of the other ships that have got tractor beams potentially a load of them could come online but take that with a huge pinch of salt because at the moment it's very much just theory craft and rumors. But I'm really interested to know what you think. Do you think it's possible that we could see the SRV and ship scale tractor beams in 3.18? To what extent do you think the cargo refactor is actually going to affect tangible gameplay in 3.18? We should see a Inside Star Citizen on that in the not too distant future, probably outlining in those um, gameplay mechanics in a bit more detail. What are you hoping to see at this year's CitizenCon? Are you planning on watching it live? Are you going to watch it afterwards? Or are you going to watch sort of like the summaries and um, highlights from content creators like the beautiful and talented board gamer? Do you think that Star Citizen Alpha 3.18 will make its live rough target date of middle of November? Whatever your thoughts, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. Also, you should check out Toby Eye Tracker. Gives you precise eye tracking. Ooh, and head tracking. Ah, natively supported in Star Citizen. It's really cool. Uh, check out my links below for that and use code BoardGamer if you'd like a discount. I'm Nord Catchem, and it's my mission to become a Nord Master. Oh no, it's Team Hacksaw. Hacksaw uses trackers and blocks your ability to go on websites like Netflix and watch the content that you want to on Netflix, question mark. Go Nordichu. Nordichu uses nordvpn.com slash boardgamer. It is super effective. He beats Team Hacksaws and he becomes a NordVPN master, a Nordimon master. Fortunately, with NordVPN, you don't need to catch them all. You just need to get a subscription from nordvpn.com slash boardgamer. Links below. Every month we have a ship giveaway, and for September we're giving away three ships, one each to three different lucky winners. The Origin 100i, the 125a, and the 135c. Any of these solid starter ships will allow you just to jump in to Star Citizen and play right away. All you need to do is comment on any of my videos made during the month to be in for a chance of winning one of those. More details in the description below. Thank you so much for watching. If you would like to further support the channel, consider using the join button under my videos or becoming a Patreon. Either way, you'll get access to some exclusive content and have more of a voice in shaping the channel. A huge thank you to anyone that already does that. You are amazing. I love you. Zin also is contractually obliged to love you. There is a link for donations and all that jazz in the description below as well if that is your preferred medium. It is super appreciated genuinely. Once again, thanks very much for watching and I'll see you in the verse.